Welcome to Business News. I'm Oni Sunday. And of course, in our top story segment, the Minister of State for Petroleum Resources assures that current fuel scarcity will soon be over. And Haughty Nigeria program kicks off to tackle food and nutrition shortage in Nigeria. Before we bring you those stories and more, let's uh, take a look at some numbers now, beginning, of course, with the equities market. Trading closed negative for the second time this week with the All Share Index losing 0.14% to close at 47,296.07 points with a market cap at 25 trillion naira, 243.4 million shares valued at 6.87 billion naira was traded today in 7,056 deals. On the losers table, we see RT Brisco and Chemical and Allied Products PLC are at the top of the losers table today, tying with a 10% loss. NGX Group is following close behind with almost 10% at 9.96%. With a 9.78% loss, Courier Service Red Star X is in fourth position. Royal X also made it to the losers table at the end of trading today. Well, ABC Transport PLC is leading the gainers table with a 9.38% gain, while Asako Insurance gained 7.62% to make it to the second position on the gainers table, while Link Ashore and Afriperd tied on the third and fourth position with 3.85% gains. Transcore, MTN, NGX Group, FMBH, of course, First Bank of Nigeria, and UPDC moved the market today, trading the highest volumes. Transcore traded 28.2 million shares, valued at 30.24 million naira to top that table. Now, with a 9.96% loss, 22.12 million NGX shares worth 463.07 million naira was traded in 297 deals today. A quick look now at the wider market to see the NAS National Stock Index is up by 0.14% to settle at 726.28 points. A total trade of 17.2 billion Naira was traded in the FMDQ space today. But we see the Naira is flat against the dollar at 416 Naira, 15 Kobo to the dollar, exactly being that figure for a couple of weeks now. Away from the numbers, let's uh, Take you through to our top stories. Minister of State for Petroleum, Timmy Silva, has assured Nigerians that the scarcity being experienced across the country will be over in a couple of days. On a follow-up visit to the Nigerian National Petroleum Commission, the minister said the market will be flooded with petrol in a few days in order to surpass demand. These kind of supply disruptions are like accidents. They are not desirable. You don't expect them to happen. But they do happen once in a while. You will agree with me that this administration has done well as far as fuel supply is concerned. But of course, accidents do happen. This is one of those accidents that was not foreseen. There are scrupulous elements. We always take advantage of situations. And this is one of such situations. I mean, there are a lot of people who want to take advantage of the situation. If you look at the map, uh, there are a lot of uh, states where you, you still have good supply. You don't even have queues in some states. In some states, then there are queues. So you know that the supply is there. Uh, unfortunately, these unscrupulous elements will always try to take advantage of the situation. Uh, so we would like to uh, try to appeal to them uh, that they should try and ensure that they, they sell the, the fuel that they have. Because the supply is there from all the figures I've seen here, uh, shown to me, the supply is there. So why are they hoarding? I uh, bet, of course, they have also found a solution to this. We want to overflood the market uh, so that, of course, they will not be able to uh, hoard the, the product anymore. Minister of State for Petroleum Resources there, Timmy Pre Silva. Now, to avoid the negative impacts the war in Ukraine will have on the global economy, Nigeria has been encouraged to look inward and build more capacity. This was highlighted at the Joint Country Portfolio Performance Review of the African Development Bank alongside the Ministry of Finance, Budget and National Planning. Nigeria has been ranked high in its performance on the implementation of projects, especially as the economy recovers from the fallout of the global COVID-19 pandemic. The war in Ukraine uh, will have uh, global ramifications. You see the sanctions and the measures being put 
up against uh, the aggressor, Russia. And, uh, you know, it, it adds to global uncertainty. And markets don't like uncertainty. That's why you see uh, developments, let's say, the oil price has shot up. You know, and then you will have a likely impact on wheat prices because Russia and Ukraine account for a big share of the world market uh, on, on wheat. So wheat, every, uh, more practically most African nations really import wheat and Nigeria is one of them. So uh, for the lesson is that uh, I think it reinforces our drive to develop value chains. Portfolio performance is uh, rated as satisfactory and as are scoring three on a scale of one to five. Uh, as I mentioned in my remarks, uh, we have opportunities to take advantage of some low-hanging fruits, particularly in uh, addressing challenges related to startup delays. You know, delays in processing uh, fake approvals, uh, signature of loans, and meeting conditions for forced disbursement. Uh, these are relatively easy to, to achieve. Of course, uh, in the wake of the COVID pandemic, we face challenges in implementing projects and managing the portfolio. And so we had to resort to uh, desk supervision. But we are happy to see that there has been an uptick in implementation at, at, at activities. It is estimated that one of every two people in West Africa in need of nutrition assistance is in Nigeria. This disturbing statistics is what the newly launched Horti Nigeria program hopes to address. The project, which is projected to generate 9.7 million euros, is being implemented by the International Fertilizer Development Center in four states of the Federation. With an intent to deal with a myriad of challenges in Nigeria's agriculture sector, the Dutch and Nigerian governments, through a bilateral agreement, established the Horti Nigeria program which will address food and nutrition shortage through improved seedlings. This program, called Horti Nigeria, will contribute to a more sustainable and inclusive horticultural system in Nigeria. The focus is on vegetables for domestic markets. The program has four components which are interconnected. The first component strives towards increasing productivity and incomes for 60,000 smallholder farmers in Kano and Kaduna. All this in an environmentally sustainable, sustainable way. We take a targeted approach and focus on seed sector development and horticulture because we feel that that is where the Netherlands can add most of its value. Nigeria is rated as one of the leading producers of tomatoes in Africa. However, it is not among the major exporting countries due largely to low yield resulting from seed type use and adoption of new management technologies. Our current partners will exponentially increase the yield. The four-year program is being implemented through a consortium involving the International Fertilizer Development Center, East-West Seed Knowledge Transfer and some research institutes. If we look at soil and soil quality here in West Africa, unfortunately, we live in dire situation. Most of the soils in this area are depleted from nutrients. If we consider that the Africa population by the end of this century is going to be as big as the Asia uh, population, and if we further consider that today Africa is only 80% food secure, there is a lot of work for all of us to be done in order to change that going forward. The horticulture sector in Nigeria offers many opportunities. With local demand outweighing production, there is an estimated supply gap of vegetable of about 30 million metric tons. There are four components in this particular uh, program. Uh, first, to increase uh, productivity of the smallholder farmers. And second is to pilot innovative technologies and also to create enabling environment. And the last one is to, I mean, 
uh, promote business to business linkages. We're going to work with 60,000 smallholder farmers in Kano and Kaduna State uh, on tomato, improved practices on tomato, okra, onion and uh, pepper. Uh, the farmers will be trained in groups. Uh, they will be working with them in clusters and uh, they will be linked to the market. Uh, they will be linked to off-takers and other value chain actors uh, on quality inputs uh, within the clusters. The project is part of the Team Europe initiative Green Economy Alliance to support the Nigerian government in diversifying its economy. The Nigerian Communications Commission is taking steps to execute its commitment towards ensuring better communication in the country. Speaking at the ongoing AFRI Next 2022 conference, formerly known as the Lagos Social Media Week, Usman Aliyu, head of Space Services Spectrum Administration Department at the NCC and other stakeholders, discussed the roadmap for the 5G spectrum auction in the country. 5G is coming. Uh, Nigeria is ready. The Commission is also um, ready in all ramifications for 5G and we are delighted that it has come to this stage where we have winners and we are talking about the benefits of 5G to Nigerians which will be from agriculture, from health, from education and uh, a lot of businesses that we expect will flourish with the uh, deployment of 5G. So it's really an interesting one and uh, we hope it will continue. And like we keep saying, 5G is also safe. Um, it will bring a lot of uh, opportunities to our startups, our techs, even security. Starting six months from now, you will start, you start seeing the deployment of 5G in cities in all the geopolitical zones, two states at least in each geopolitical zone. And by, the, um, by this time next year or upper year, you will see additional four states in each of those political zones. And before the 10-year period of the license, 100% of Nigerian cities must have been covered by 5G. So this is basically what the NCC has put in place. 5G is a network of networks. It will enable us to do everything we are doing right now with 4G, but at much, much higher speeds. In addition to that, we are going to have a lot of uh, mission-critical applications that require extremely very low latency. For 5G, the latency of 5G is 1 milliseconds and the latency of 4G is 10 milliseconds. The latency of the human brain is also 10 milliseconds. Latency means response time. So what it means in essence is that 5G is faster than your brain. For entrepreneurs, the stage will be set for you to unleash your creativity. Only your imagination can limit what you can do with 5G. 5G deployment is not going to affect our health, you know, uh, negatively. Rather, it's going to is going to improve it because through 5G, right, we are going to have e-health, real time, you know, real time consultation with doctors, with pharmacies, and uh, I, I, I think we should be ready to live, you know, beyond 70. And that's it on the business segment of the news. I'm Oni Sunday.